Well, my friend Vicki Ross was here this afternoon and she was working on her jelly plate and so was I. And I was doing um, metallics on black and I really liked the way these came out and I just kept going and going. So I was going to do the um, back sides of them. So I thought, well, I'll go live with you guys, see who's home, who's not traveling, who doesn't have company. And I'll just do the uh, back side of these um, of these jelly plates. It's kind of cool. All this is is black cardstock. Oh, hi, Melody. I hope you're feeling better. Hi, Bonnie. Whoops. Um, so this is um, black cardstock, and the paints. I'll show you the ones that I've already done. I'll do. I did. Um, turned out that I had, had already done about eleven of them. And uh, what I'm using are my woodblock prints. That's what I've been using so far. Anyway, um, this is one of the elephants. And this right here is the um, tray to some meat. And I just saved, I think it was meat or maybe sweets or something. I can't remember. It's packaging. And then I just used that on the jelly plate to get that effect. Hi, CJ. Um, just some more of the block print. And this one here is one that I made from the sticky foam. Remember I spoke about making um, different kinds of stamps with the sticky foam. And this is one I did a while back, a couple of years actually. And that's how this one came out. I think it looks pretty good. Hi, Mary. Oops, that's blank. And um, from the wood blocks, this is also from the wood blocks. More wood blocks. I think all the rest are from wood blocks, actually. And so I liked the way they came out and I thought, you know, I think I would like to use some of these as a, uh, if I cut them down in half and turn them into maybe the cover to some small little journals. And so when I thought of that, I thought, well, then I need to do the back side so that when they open up, you know, the inside also has the same kind of prints. So that's why I thought, okay, let's do those. Let's get those done. And if anybody's around, you can join in and um, see the different colors I end up using. Most of them were metallics, and a few of them were the color shifts because they do have metallic in them also. So basically, they were all metallics of uh, one kind or another. So. All right, so let me see. I've got a gold one on here. So I think on the back of this one, I think maybe I want to put some kind of a purple. I have um, these here are folk art. This is called amethyst. I think I'll put an amethyst on there with maybe a little bit of uh, gold here and there and see how that comes out. Oh, and I had this um, sketchbook. I don't know where or when. A long, long time ago, I got this for super, super cheap. So what I did is, whoops, um, when I would stamp on here to remove the paint, then I would just stamp it here in this book. And so it came out kind of cool, too. So I'm kind of doing two things at one time. Not sure what I'll do with this either, but... They're there. <laughs> Something to do. All right. So I got to put those out so I can do the same thing. That way I'm not wasting any of the paint. 
Can't waste the paint, you know. And then I'm getting this journal ready for whatever I'm going to do with that. All right, so back to that and some gold. Let's get a little bit of gold in there. Hi, Lisa. Hi, Lynn. And if I missed anyone else, the chat has already moved up. <laughs> All right. Yeah, Vicki was here. I don't know how many of you follow Vicki Ross. She's more what I call a fine artist. And we're making her relax and come down to our level. <laughs> and she's enjoying doing mixed media. All right, so let's see. Let's see which stamp. I think I'll use, I haven't used this stamp yet. I'll do that. So I'll put it on there and then I come and stamp it on my book. And the first couple of stamps on this stamp here, transferring onto this other paper, um, it takes a while because it has to build up because it was so, you know, so dry. So it takes a little while for the paint to build up on the block. So there's something there to print off. Pretty slippery. Okay, let me get a little awkward here. Hold on. Okay, so. Well, I got gold on. Maybe I'll switch this up now because see now I've got gold on that one. Let me put this gold on one that I don't have gold on. Or do I have gold on all of them? No, see there's no gold on this one. So this will look cool. Let's do it on the back of this one. Yeah, um, Lisa, I think I've only done it maybe once before, and then it kind of left my mind, and I did it again this afternoon, and it reminded me of really how much I like it. So, and especially with the metallics, you know, obviously they always come up so pretty on the black. Oh, look how pretty this is coming up. Lovely. I love it. Okay. Next. All right. So let's just pick a color. This is Berry. And it is one of also the metallics by Deco Art. And you got to remember to mix these because they tend to settle and um, and you'll end up with, you know, this white, not white, but clear stuff that rises up to the top. Let me get another color similar to this one, but not identical. Let's see. This one is pearl, and the color is purple, but it's a pearl metallic. I don't know what that means, but hey.
Well, last night it was very, very chilly here. It froze, but it got all the way up so far to 62 degrees today. Beautiful, beautiful day. If I had paid attention and watched the news, I think I would have um, um, eco printed all day today because it's a perfect weather. Sun's out there. I could have thrown all my papers outside. So I have to double check, see what tomorrow is. I might do it tomorrow. All right. So I'm going to put it over here on my black journal. That works out perfect. Need to get that more flat. Okay, and now I'll put it on the back side of this one. I've got a little tiny bit of purple on the front. I'll coordinate nice. And what's really cool about this, you know, is they dry so fast when they're on the jelly plate. At least mine do. I don't put too, too much in a paint, and they dry pretty quickly. Oh, look how pretty. Woo-hoo. Pretty. Okay, so we got this on this side, that on that side. We are going. This is starting to look like almost like crushed velvet or something. All right, next color. Let's do... How about some kind of copper? Copper looked pretty with that purple that stayed there. All right. This copper is a little dry. That's okay. We'll make it work. Might have to add a little bit of a... That'll be okay. I'm going to say just add a little bit of that other color that's pretty wet, but I think this will be okay. Just afraid it might dry before I get all the stamping done. Oh, we'll play it by ear. Let's hope we don't have to come back. Okay, let's pick a big one so it'll go fast. <laughs> hurry, 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 it's drying, I can feel it. Oh. Okay, let's hope it all picks up. If not, it just means we have some colors left over to build up on the next one. It'll all work. Ooh. All of these are having the ooh factor. What do you guys think? I like. 
like it. All right. Next color. Let's see, what am I going to do it on? I think I'll do this one. So let me get some of like the turquoise color. This was kind of deeper. This is a teal. So the other one I think was like a turquoise. This has a little bit more green in here. Hopefully it'll get all these little crusty bits on the edge and look really cool. Okay. Let's do this one. I haven't done this pattern yet. Let me get my journal. Sounds like a suction cup. <laughs> okay. Okay, that color is going to look cool on here. Oops, there goes my dog barking. one a little bit whoa of the a little bit of the color shift with this darker green I don't think I've used this on black before so let's see this one is um oh <laughs> metallic Christmas tree <laughs> okay <laughs> And then I'll put the um, the green color shift, which looks more like a chartreuse to me, but that's just me. They call it green. Green. Very good. Okay, color stamp. I think, I think this is like the last one I haven't used. We'll have to start repeating. Let me get my journal. Hold on.
Now what? <laughs> now where do I put it? Did I do something wrong? Hmm. I think I'm doing something wrong. Do I start all over now? See, I don't even know what to do now. Oh, well, here we go. It's my pattern. I'll make it the way I want it. <laughs> even though I think I did it wrong, but that's okay. I can live with that. Okay. And we will do I think we'll do this one. Why? I don't know. Because there's not too much color on this one and that back one I think is going to be pretty bright. I have a feeling what am I going to do with these papers, Lisa? What I'm going to do is I'm going to cut them in half. And I think I'm going to use them as cover for some mini journals. And that's why I'm doing the back side. Or I should say, well, I'm doing both sides. I don't know which side will be the back side. But I think what I'll end up doing is probably cutting them this way folding them that way so the the journal will be about this size right here whatever that is <laughs> that's the plan right now but you know how that goes they're always a changing all right so boy that cleaned that off pretty good i want to see what the yellow would look like but i'm not sure what to play with with the yellow Maybe this. Ooh. Okay, let's just try it. Let's just try it. Let's just try it. Okay. Yes, these color shift plate paints, they are really beautiful. And um, I found them the cheapest was, well, if you want this size, the cheapest is at Walmart. If you want the larger size, they have the larger ones. Because this is two ounces. I forget how big the larger ones are. I don't know if it's four, four or six ounces. And they have them at um, at Michael's and at Hobby Lobby. So at least you can use the coupon. They're still pricey. But if you're going to be using a lot of them per ounce, it's cheaper if you use the coupon and get the big one. But if you're just starting off and you'd like to have one of every color, then I would go and get the small ones at Walmart for like three bucks. The larger one at the other stores, they're like eight dollars. And then of course, you can use your coupon and all that. But um, but that's quite a chunk out of your pocketbook if you want to experiment with all the colors. So. I would just get the small cheapy ones and then you'll end up finding out which colors you like the most. Then you can go and use your coupon and get the bigger one that's more cost effective. Um, 
Um, no, I have not used the Lumineer paints. Are those the same ones that look like in the little bottle, like the inks? Is that the ones you're talking about? If I'm visualizing the right, the right paints. Okay. No, I haven't used them. I've had my eye on them. <laughs> I've had my eye on them. Um, but just, I don't know why I haven't gotten to tell you the truth. Because you can get those with the coupon too. But um, I don't know. I don't have a reason. Whoops. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Oopsie. I really don't have a reason why I haven't gotten them. I've gotten other things I don't need, so I don't know why I haven't got that. <laughs> oh, look pretty. Got all the little goobers and all the bits and all that fun stuff. I want to just put it down a little bit so hopefully it'll stick. It'll stay there. Look, ready. Okay. Next. What were those? Those were, oh my goodness. Wait a minute. Wait, 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 wait. What did I use? Oh, I'm forgetting already what I just put down there. It must have been this and what? This and the yellow? I don't even remember. I think so. I think so. If any of you remember, <laughs> what colors did I use on that? <laughs> I can't even remember two minutes ago what I did. Oh, I'm in bad shape. Oh, that's bad. Okay, let's do, um, well, I'm going to have to start repeating colors. I don't think I have any more that I want to, okay, I haven't used this color shift. I've used this color, but not on the color shift, and which they're just calling it the uh, aqua. Red and yellow. Okay, so I use these two. Okay, great. Thank you. They were the closest to me, but I wasn't sure if I <laughs> if I put them further away or left them close. Okay, so what I'm going to do just for my brain I'll put them right there as I do. And then when I'm done, I'll push them back that way. I'll halfway look like I know what I'm doing. All right. So the next color with this one, I don't know. I wonder. Let's try this. It's dark and we're going on dark, but that's okay because we've got metallic. So this is called Dark Patina. And let's see what happens. I think it might be kind of cool. All right, now I got to start repeating my. Oh no, I have one more elephant I haven't used. We'll use him, see what happens. 
And I was going to say I have to start repeating all my stamps, but I do have a little Mr. Elephant. Okay, let me think this straight. So if I'm going to fold them like this. <laughs> okay, so they're going the right way. I just want to make sure my elephants are going the right way. Now that I know what I'm going to do with my paper. I get so confused with upside down, bisac word stuff. I don't know. I think I just confused myself. Oh, these little elephants are so cute. I shouldn't have lined them up. Why did I do that? I should have staggered the little puppies. Look at that. They look a lot cuter when they're staggered. Why? Because I wasn't thinking. Okay, let me put this over here. Okay, now, I think I'll put it on this one. There's no blue on here. Let's go with the contrast. Look at the little elephants. Look how cute. Look at all the shininess. Woo. Okay. Next. All right. So the colors I've got here. Oh, I did do those elephants. No, it's a different elephant. Wait a minute. Oh, dear. I got myself confused. Okay, forget that. All right. So I have two that have sort of like the blues and the aqua turquoise color. So I got to figure out what I'm going to do in the back of those. And so I think I'm going to have to start repeating colors, too. And, okay, let's get those out of the way. I know what I did there. I'm going to use metallic berry. Metallic berry, and then I'm going to use the, the, um, oh no, I'm going to use, hold on, I'm going to use the other stuff. I'm going to use the pink color ship. That's what I'm going to do. Because I want that added iridescence in there. We'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. Should work. Ooh, a little too much paint. That's okay. All right. What stamp? What stamp? What stamp? Let me see if I have any left that I want to use. Ooh, here's one with, okay, I'm going to use this because it is wet. I'll have enough time to do this small stamp. Get this real small one. And I have a lot more open time because it is so wet. So, just get my journal.
You thought I'd forget to offset it, didn't you? <laughs> I almost did. Move over paint. Oh, see, I'm confusing myself. I'm so easy. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Let me flip this over. Starting to dry. Quick, quick. Yes, Carmen, this is black cardstock. And if you don't have black cardstock, you could um, do your first layer. Could be done with just black paint on any kind of paper you have. You know, put a little thin coat on your jelly plate and and print black first, and then come back and do these. And it would be just as cool. You don't have to go out and buy it. I just happen to have it. It's some other project that I never you know, used it all up. So there it was. Okay, so that's blue. So let me put for this one, let's see. Um, maybe just some gold. Hmm? Venetian gold, a warm one. Sorry if I'm missing you guys because I've got the computer a little far away so I can have room for all this stuff. And um, and it's like right in the middle of my vision <laughs> where I can't read. It's like, what? <laughs> it's like, okay, I can see real good far away. And I can see close up with my reading glasses here because that's really pretty much what I use. And then you guys right now on the computer are right where in the middle of where my two visions are good. <laughs> and I have to stop and get real close and squint. So I apologize if I haven't said hello or answered any question. I have to do it like when I stop and then I'll, I get closer and I'll read. <laughs> All right, so the stamp I'll use for this one, see if I have any more. Oh, this one's pretty cool. That's a little too much like that. That's there right now. So let me, let's do this one. Another little paisley that I have. Okay, let me get my journal again.
All right. I think we're ready. Another winner. I have so many other things I need to do, but now I'm anxious to get these covers started. <laughs> no, Rosemary, no. You have more serious things you got to get done. All right. Now this one, this one was made from my my, what you call it? My, um, what do you call this stuff? <laughs> that pill and stick, pill and stick, what? Okay, you know what I'm talking about. Um, foam, fun foam. That's what I made this one from. And I think it came out pretty cool. I like it. So, what color do I want in the back of this one? Um... Well, I've run out of colors. Let's see. Maybe I got a little purple on there. Maybe I should go a lot of purple. And this is um, amethyst. I think I used this before. Wait. Oh, I already have. Oh, different company same name and totally different color look at that oh well okay let's use both of them and see what happens same name different colors let's see what we create one is deco art other one is folk art and they both think they're an amethyst look how different Wow, gigantic difference. Okay, so what what stamp do I want to use? Let's see. I think I think I use this one. They're both pretty colors, but a big difference. All right, the journal. Uh-oh, that one sort of glued the pages together. All right. Oops, that was a little slippery. That's going to look crazy. That, that went over in the corner. I'll show you the stamps on the journal when I'm done. They look pretty cool.
Oh, wow. Look, guys. Look how pretty. Pretty. All right. So I have two left. One's purple and one is silver. So I think I'll put in the back of the purple one. It'll have to be some of this blue stuff again to contrast a little bit. So I did the pink or the red with the yellow. Let's do a little bit. No, let's not do that. Let's get really wacky. Let's put some orange in there. <laughs> Color shift. Let's get really crazy. Okay. Whoa. Uh-oh, I just saw a mistake I made. They're both color shift. I need to work with one, at least one metallic. I need something that's a little more solid. These are so, you know, transparent. I don't know if that's going to work. Well, let's try it anyway. We will never know unless we experiment. So let's try it. See what happens. See what happens. Ooh, I can't see what I'm doing. Okay. Okay, let's see if it shows up. That'll tell us if we can use just the color shift with no other metallic paint in there. Ooh, and I laid it down all crooked. Oh boy. Okay. <laughs> Ooh. Oh my goodness. Look at that. Would you have thought that that was going to look like that? <laughs> That's what color shift does. It does the whammy shift on you. The shammy whammy. Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? Here I thought this was going to be a mistake. I think my mistake was not using just the color shifts on everything. That was my mistake. Oh. Oh, Lord. Okay. Let's see what happens. Let's color shift it again. I might have to do a whole batch just with the color shift. All right. Now, see, that teaches me that when I doubt something, just go with it. Because I could have cleaned that off and never realized how much I liked it just straight with the color shift. I would have kept on adding the metallic and never knowing I was missing out on that beautiful look. So, go with the flow, people. Don't fight it. 
This is my homemade one. Let's see if I can pick it up. <laughs> did it do anything? See, it's hard to tell. Oh, yeah, I did. Because with these color shifts, you don't really see anything until you lay it down on that black. And I, hold on here, let me, where does it end? Okay. All right. Now let's see what it does on the black. And these colors were what now? <laughs> Yellow. I moved them all so I could stamp. See, I was counting on, I think I used those. I hope I did. I don't remember now. But they both are color shift. That's all I remember. Oh, wow. This thing is weird. Look at that. I don't know if it shows up on the camera, but it is this beautiful, beautiful purple. And then it turns into blue. Woohoo. Well, what we have learned. Okay, first of all, let me show you on the side here what I've been doing when I stamp my stamps. I clean it off. I have this um, this journal that has black in it also. So I thought, well, let's just do this, it all at one time. So what I've been doing, I've been cleaning off my stamps in here to create some backgrounds for... Um, or whatever. I don't, I'm not really sure what I'm going to do with any of these. But um, cool. You know me and my peacock feathers. That one didn't come off so good. I don't know what kind of paint that was. Maybe it was the the stamp. It was a different type of stamp. One of my elephants. <laughs> and then that was that one I did with the fun foam. That came out pretty, those colors. Those were different greens. It's color shift, I think, though. They're really pretty. My other little elephants. That was the color shift. And that's it that I did on the journal. Now, uh-oh, even though I didn't put purple over here, the shift made it turn those colors, and it's kind of sort of almost the same color on both sides, but I can live with that. Not what I wanted, but I can live with it. All right, so... Get a view of the ones we just finished. Little elephants. Beautiful peacocks. I think my favorite.
and that's it. So for those that um, so those that came in later in the process, just to repeat how we got that look was I started off with some black card stock. And if you don't have black card stock, you could always just paint it black, any kind of paper you have uh, with your acrylic paint, or even if you have black gesso, you could put a coat on there and print on your white paper and then you'd have black. Okay, so then after that, what I did was I used a variety of different brands and different colors of metallic paints. Um, I'm not particular about any particular um, brand. Um, I just go for the color. So they run anywhere from like $1.25 to $2.25, depending on the brand and where you get them. But you can always use your coupon. And those are always, a lot of people overlook the metallics. Um, but I really, really like them. I would encourage people to get, you know, a few, just a few colors and see how you like it, you know, from your favorite from your favorite colors and then play around with it. And then I used folk art color shift and um, incorporated it with the metallic. And when you do it with the metallic, these are the kinds of looks that you get. And then if you were here at the end, I made what I thought was a mistake and only put the color shift without the metallic. And that's when we came out with, where is it? That really pretty cool, this. And we came out with this super duper cool print. So you can't go wrong. You know, you're gonna get either something like this, which is super cool, you know, or something like that between these um, using the metallic or the color shift. And the color shift is a little more pricier than the metallic, but by, you know, maybe about 50 cents or so, this costs more. Again, you can always get them with your coupon and then it's not an issue. But these run about, at Walmart, these I think are $3 little bit more at the other stores. Um, but those are the things that we worked with. And then you can just use, you know, whatever stamps you have. I just happen to want to play with my woodblock stamps. So those are the ones that I used. But you can use anything. You can even if you have, um, I didn't do that today. But if you have um, embossing folders. You can do the same thing, just like, you know, I used a big thing like this to stamp. You can get your embossing folders and you can use them as stamps. And then, you know, just make sure you wash them right away. Have like a little tub of water next to you. And so you don't have to be getting up from your workspace. Just, you know, do your prints, throw it in the water with a little bit of soap in there. And then when you're all done playing, then, you know, just make sure you wash them. But people overlook their embossing folders. They make really cool um prints on your jelly plates. Maybe next time we play, we'll, um, we'll use those, but those are always a lot of fun to, um, to play with. Okay. Let me read here and see what I've been missing from everybody. All the excitement. I got to get my, I got to get closer. <laughs> okay. Yes. I'm glad a lot of you like your metallics because, um, you know, it'd be a shame if you aren't, you know, using them. They're so cool. Um, yeah, well, I'm glad you guys are, you know, are finding these things and you're playing with them. Yeah. So anyway, so my intention, this is my plan, is um, I'm going to fold them 
I'm going to cut them. I'm going to cut them this way. And then they'll fold. And that'll be a cover for a little, for some little journals I'm going to make. I'm not sure what kind of journal they're going to be. But I'm going to turn them into a small, a small junk journal of some kind. And I think they make cool covers. I really, really do. So I think that's it for my jelly printing. I was going to do some of the transfer ones, but I'm not sure because I didn't get all of my, I didn't get any of the, um, you know, the illustrations that I was going to use any of the, the pages. So I'm not set up and ready to do that. It'll take me a while to get that all together. But um, I encourage you. Oh, before I go, let me show you something I was re here working on as a little. I have some ladies come over on. Um, whoops, hold on. Let me hope I don't drop everything here. Hold on. I have ladies that come over. We have open studio here at my studio um, on the weekends. One day we, I mean, yeah, one day a week. And last week. Melody and a few other ladies were here, and we started working. Let me get this out. Oh, hold on. Let me put this in the package, and then I'll show you real quick what we were working on, and maybe you guys might want to try it yourself. Okay, I just didn't want the fabric getting stuck <laughs> to this stuff. Hold on, let me get this out of the way. Crowding myself in. All right. Now, I know a lot of you people that are involved in uh, mixed media are familiar with um, Tisha Moore. I mean, she's like the one that's, in my opinion, she started... Um, giving the mixed media the proper attention that it needed by the collaging that she did. She did beautiful stuff, and I really like her stuff. But what I like more about her stuff is these little, she calls them pillows, these little pillows that she makes, and she turns them um, into, well, whatever you want to. She puts them, make, turns them into book covers. She turns them in to purses, she turns them into pillows, whatever it is that you want to do with it. And they're really super simple to make. And if you guys have scraps of fabric, if you're the ladies that have fabric, and even if you don't have scraps, you have old clothes you're getting ready to throw away that you know you wear and wear and wear until they're ready to fall apart, um, you might want to try this. And Basically, what you do is you get, um, okay, let's, you get a piece of fabric. Let's just say this is fabric. You get a piece of fabric, and with the wrong sides together, wrong sides together, opposite of what you're always taught to do it, um, sew on three sides. You can do it with a machine. You can do it by hand. Then you put a little bit of batting, very little. You can see there's not a lot in here. Just a little bit to give it a little bit of puffiness. And you put it uh, put it in there and then you sew this. So what you have is you have raw edges all the way around with the right sides out. Just like you see here. Right sides. And then when you, when you do all these, well, I should have said before, when you sew all these sides together, you want to go in um, probably about at least a half an inch because what you do next and this has to be just kind of rough looking you just roll this over just to cover the little bit of the stitch and then you hand stitch it which ends up looking like this you roll it over and you just hand stitch it whatever stitch you know or don't know or make it up and then you can come back with your embroidery thread 
and you can zigzag sew. You can go around a design or a pattern, and you're basically making like a little miniature quilt. Doesn't matter what it looks like in the front or the back because this is just the this is the look. It's the wonky look. So don't go for perfection. Don't say, oh, I don't know how to sew. Yours will come out the best. Okay. So I did a few of those. We did those when the ladies were here. And um, and then what you do, and you go, well, what do you do with them now? And you make them any size. She suggests that you stay under six inches square. Anything bigger than that, it just starts getting a little too cumbersome. So, you know, if you keep them under those six inches, it's perfect. I found that the size I like to work with is kind of like this one, which is about three and a quarter by almost four. And I, I like this size. Um, okay, so then what do you do after that? Well, then, like, for instance, I'm going to turn this one into a journal cover. And I don't want the journal any bigger than that, obviously. And I don't want it any longer than that. So I'm this, this was perfect for what I want it, you know, to use it for. And then what you do is you bring, you know, you have your little pillows. And all you do is you just bring them together and do a little whip stitch or whatever it is you call it. And then, you know, then you have that and then you do the same thing over here on this side and you whip it up and you've created yourself your own little textile that you're going to use, uh, in my case, as a journal cover. And then what she has done, um, she will make some small, thin pillows and then she'll create them and sew them together and then she creates the spine if you can visualize that and then you have another one that looks similar to this in, in size and you sew this up to here and then this new one that you have back here you sew back there and voila you have the most unique the most cute um journal covers you have ever seen and so I think that's my kind of my, my next little thing I want to start working on and um, and start making these little these little journals. I think they are so cute. Um, you can look her up on her videos on uh, she has a older video that she sh uh, shows you step by step how to make them. And um, it's a perfect thing for scraps. Just perfect and um i would encourage you all if you do have scraps and you like you know just sitting around sewing because you don't have to have a sewing machine to do these um and they come out really cool and then afterwards if you want to embellish them you know you can put um um you know if you have like here i have old jewelry i put that on there or if you just have some beads that you want to put on this fabric had these these um mirrors already on there so that worked out pretty cool and then i got this in a swap and she had put this doily on there isn't that adorable and that's a really cute you know thing to do with it too and um but anyway and this one has a little piece of jewelry this was sent to me and some more little jewelry i think this is really cool so um look at your stuff different Look at what you thought was trash. <laughs> it's not trash. It's fun stuff to play with. All right, ladies. Thank you so much for coming and playing with me. Go get yourself your jelly plate out. If you don't have a jelly plate, go make a jelly plate. If you don't want to make a jelly plate, just do it. You know those, um, um, what are the, the cutting boards? There are plastic cutting boards that you can get at the Dollar Tree. I think there's two in a pack, which means they're 50 cents each. And it just roll paint on there and do it and play with it. You know, have fun. Just do it any way you can. And get yourself your black paint or your black cardstock and bring out your metallics. That will, I will encourage you to go buy. If you don't have any metallic paint or color shift, I would say go get at least two colors of each and have some fun. <laughs> all right thank you ladies have fun have a nice weekend be safe be warm 
all that kind of good stuff. And thank you for keeping company with me for a while. I'll see you guys soon. Bye.